Yeah, buddy. Smash right here in the middle of the head, banging ball, uh-huh. And with us, one of the groups. They say the Stones to the 60s were the kings of their genre. They say Aerosmith in the 70s was the same thing. They say in the late 80s going into the 90s. Oh, pardon me. It is these boys right here, Guns and Roses, out of Los Angeles. These guys come from all over the place. Which, uh, you guys are going back and forth on these cameras here. Right here we got Stevie. We got Duff right over here. We got my man Slash right over here. Izzy next to him. And W, Axel Rose, a period after W, if you would, please. Now, here's what the story is. Fellas, they say you guys are cocky. They say you're insolent. They say, honestly speaking, you guys are uh, a bunch of uh, wackos. Wacko. Now, now, how you guys feel about that? Uh, that's the image you guys have got as far as the critics are concerned. We just don't take any garbage off anybody, that's all. It's uh -huh. simple. And a lot of people think that's problems. Oh, really? Well, now, let me ask you this, man. A lot of people are saying that you guys are blowing away the headlining act. And a lot of bands don't want a head, uh, don't want you guys on the uh, tour with them. How'd this Motley Cruz thing come along? This Motley Cruz thing. Oh, we're going out with them in yeah. a few, uh, well, about a week. Well, actually, we're finding out that um, a lot of the bands, after they've had taking the time to like listen to the record and stuff. We're getting calls from <laughs> a lot of major bands, you know, that really like the record. Uh -huh. You know, but when you when they've already got an opening act set up, yeah. You know, it just you have to wait till there's an opening to go out there with them. I like what we're doing because we're the tours we're like doing a little bit with this band, a little bit with this band, rather than yeah. doing like a whole year with one act. Well, uh, I read somewhere where you guys have a. Uh, a situation where you don't necessarily like certain acts. Let me throw out some names. Aerosmith, how you guys feel about that? No, it's not. I mean, it's not even getting to that point. I mean, it's like what you, the question you ask about, you know, like the bands and how do they feel. It's like with crew, you know, they probably don't care. I mean, yeah. they just want to have a good time. We right. did with the cult. That was a great one, too, you know. Yeah. As far as the other bands, we don't even pay attention to what's going on yeah. with them. Aerosmith's a great band. We've been trying to work out something with them for a while. It's just always conflicting schedules. Yeah. Welcome to the Jungle is the first release off of this new album. We're going to take a look at this clip. What kind of jungle are we talking about here, fellas? Uh, talking about the concrete, <laughs> yeah, concrete the streets, the, the city, and um, basically what being exposed with to like news and everything else of the city, what it can do to you and how it can affect you. Do you guys have a little problem getting this thing uh, on TV? Yeah, I think so. Seems to have taken a little while, yeah. Now that you mention that. Yeah, and there's a few changes right. been made to this video. Yeah. We, <laughs> we bought actual news footage from that had been shown on television from NBC and CBS and uh -huh. ABC. And, but we had to cut a lot of that out. Yeah. Well, let's see what the end result is. Guns and Roses right here on MTV. Uh -huh. Gentlemen, together on the count of four, let's rock. One, two, three, four. Let's rock. Well, thank you. Head banging. Mm-hmm. MTV smash right here. Guns and Roses with me right now, fellas. Got to ask you, what in the world is this? This here from the inner sleeve. You were looking at the album covered here, but uh, I got to ask the inner oh. sleeve, man. What kind of picture? Well, what is this picture all about that's, that's here? That's a postcard. Highly state panic. That's a postcard. Oh, really? That's a picture. Um, I understand that this was uh, banned by the record company. Yeah. No, it wasn't banned by the record company. It was banned by a lot of stores. Mm-hmm. Um, the record company was actually pretty much into it. It was banned by Warner Brothers. They wouldn't, um, they wouldn't produce the album cover that way. So we had to get, we had to hire an independent artist to put the album cover together. It's a Robert Williams painting. Right. He does a lot of shows um, here in New York and yeah. in LA and all over the world. And he's, it's more of an like an underground comics artist. Uh -huh. That's like that painting like sold in 1978 for like ten thousand dollars. Oh really? Yeah. No and kidding. So now it's worth, worth a lot more. <laughs> when I, you know, on your on your album notes, I, I I wrote here that it says special thanks to all the teachers, preachers, cops, and elders who never believed. The meaning therein, gentlemen, just just, just people that general, didn't believe in what you know. Doing. So in words, you are holding one finger very very high in front of their faces. Yeah, yeah, when you were, yeah when you were a kid, you know, going well, listen to this music. No, you'll never get anywhere doing that. Yeah, we will. You wait and see. But well, I tell you what, you guys got a good reputation out there on the road, man. I know it was uh, rough the first night out there at the Marquee in England, as I didn't gotta, understand uh, it, but you guys are kicking skates. ass right now, huh? Oh, yeah. All the We're, skates have been... Well, you know, I, I also hear that... that, that Went from the Marquee to the Odeon there. Yeah. You, you guys know. are kicking ass now, you man. Know. I mean, all over the place. You just played at the Ritz last night. No, no. Uh, no, no, no. It was last night because yeah, it was last Saturday. Night. Where's your head at? 
Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> man. This guy's in another world. Here. Well, here's what I got to ask, because I understand it. When you guys go, you are very well known. No, no, no. You guys, as I understand it, are very well known for your uh, interior decorating capabilities, along with great rock and roll. That's great. And as I understand, uh, you guys have redecorated many a, a motel room, and I look at this beautiful... We break the hammer all the time. Well, gentlemen, uh, if I gave you 30 seconds, do you think that... Uh, tell these real quick. We got some dates coming up? Go yeah. some hotels that we're going to be visiting. <laughs> what, what motels do we have to, to look forward to? <laughs> It's our, it's our motel tour, see? Yes. Anyhow, we're playing October 23rd at the Ritz. Uh -huh. Tomorrow night. Uh, okay. 25th. The 25th at the Kipsy. October 20th. Oh, oh, I see. I get it. Okay. Oh, okay. October 26th in Providence. Right. Uh, October 27th in Boston. October 29th in the Morris. In Brooklyn. Oh, fellas, with this, uh, Tell that girl appetite for destruction. No problem. If appetite for destruction is any indication, you guys are going to destroy a whole lot when it comes to rock and roll. Good luck to you. And I'm going to ask you guys now, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to redecorate this room. On your march, set, go. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have before us here is redecoration unlike any I've ever seen. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's starting to look a little more like home. These boys have such a touch. They have such a beautiful artistry about them. Oh, I have never in my life ever seen anything done like this. this is a wrecking crew. Unbelievable. Indeed. To some, this would look like a mess. To others, it would be a thing of beauty. Yeah. Guns and Roses. Not only can they rock on stage, but they can do some interior decorating, buddy.